morning guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon from Shore Fisherman UK. Today we're at XL in Tamworth, so we've driven four hours from down in East Sussex to come and pick up my new boat, which is the Scout 360. We're gonna go in now, unbox it, give you like a first look at all the stuff that comes out of the box, inflate it, deflate it, see if we can get any tips and tricks on how to put it together easier, load it into the back of the car, take it home, and then we should be doing a first launch on it hopefully saturday but obviously it's weather dependent so we're going now um we've got we've got the box in the back of the warehouse there and we'll just start rolling guys we're hands on with it now um i'm just gonna rip the tape off start putting things out the box and let you guys know what i'm seeing as i'm seeing it so I'll let you know exactly what it comes with I'm not going to use a knife to open it, so it might take me a minute. Obviously, using a knife to open it would be stupid anyway. So, so we've put this in the box to hold things together, but. I'm assuming that they've put it in there as PVC repair patches. So you get, that's just PVC, so you get two massive strips in the box and keep them safe. And then, seat number one, sliding seat as well. And then, try and get in order, obviously seat number two, And that's ours. Interlocking ours as well, so they split in the middle for when you pack them down. And then there's going to be two carry bags in here. That carry bag is for the floor. And then there'll be another carry bag. So this carry bag will be for the boat, so this will be a lot bigger. So you'll put your boat in that, it's massive. Look. We're gonna fold it away into that later, once we've done all the pumping it up. And then, we've got the pump. Um, I'm gonna inflate mine using an electric pump. I'll do a tube with this one, I'll do one tube, and then I'll do the rest of my electric pump, I'm gonna end up sweating. So yeah, you get pump and pump as well. And then we've got some more stuff. Right. So these are the slatted bits that go along the side of the floor. They lock the floor in so when you're going along the boat's not all flexing and moving. I'll show you where they go and how to do them in a minute. And then this vital piece of equipment this is. So there's a reason it's in a bright orange tub. Because you've got your valve tool. So if your valves are leaking, you stick that in, you can tighten them up. And then you've got emergency repair glue and patches in there as well. So you should always keep that in the boat. If you're in the boat and your valve starts leaking, you put that inside it up. If that don't work, take the valve out, put a bit of glue in there, tighten it back up. And that should fix your problem. It's got a little ring on the top as well, so you can literally just rope it onto the boat somewhere and then it's not, it's not forgotten about. Go down there too. And now for the biggest bit. The boat's got a strap on it as well, which is nice. It's got like a little ratchet strap. I'm gonna try and make this look easy. I'm in the box. Give you guys an idea on the weight. I can pick that up, I can walk with it. Got 
little ratchet strap here. It's going to pop the coming handy. So what I was talking about, it's just wrapped around the boat. Things like that make a difference. Because if you're not putting it back in the bag and you just want to chuck it like that in the boot, you could, you've already got a strap to go around it. So if you don't have a strap to go around them, as soon as you put them in the boot, they just butterfly open and take up loads more space than they need to. It smells like a new car. do now is I'll get the hand pump out and I'll put one tube up by hand um, I set a timer on my phone so there's three tubes on this plus one for the floor so it's three plus one so it will basically be I'll do the biggest tube which will be the front um, I'll do the front tube and then if you times that by three it gives you a rough idea on how long it'll take to inflate it and then I'll get the electric pump out and start using that instead right guys we've got the pump out so I'm gonna put up that uh, if you were sat on a boat, it will be the rear right hand side tube. Um, I'm not going to do it ridiculously fast, I'm going to do it at like a normal pace. But I'll speed this bit up, I'll stopwatch it, I'll get that now, hang on. Um, I'm going to see exactly how long it takes. So at the moment we're on zero. Yep, starting from now, put that there, and I'll show you it when we're done. Right, so that is uh, three minutes and 14 seconds. So obviously we'll need to put a little bit more in because you can't just put that tube straight up to like 3.5. You do each tube on sort of one PSI. And then once you've done that, you go around the whole boat and finish it off. Otherwise you'll burst the internal bladders. Because these boats are not just one tube round. You've got one tube at the back, back right one tube at the back left, and then one tube at the front. And what that means is if you're out of sea and you put a hook through the boat or something, even if one was to fully deflate, you'd still have enough air in the boat to get back. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is grab the electric pump, go around it, finish it off, we'll chuck the air floor in, um, and just see what the experience is like putting the boat together. And then once we've done that, we'll take the air floor out, and then we'll put the alloy deck in, which is what I'm gonna be using it with. But just for the sake of people that are buying this boat as standard. As standard, it does come with the air floor, which for a lot of people is actually gonna be better because it makes it more um, sort of mobile because it's a lot lighter. And even the same, you're still gonna have rate, rated for a 20. So it makes no difference whether you've got the air deck in or whether you've got the alloy deck, still rated for a 20, it's still gonna be a stable platform. Uh, the air floor is a high pressure floor. So I think it goes up to something like I can't remember, I'll have to double check it, but from the last ones I remember, they, it takes quite a lot to fill them up. Um, and they are rock hard. But the thing about them is, is if you drop a fish on them, they're not like, they're so easy to repair. And obviously, seeing as this is a model where you can sort of buy the inflatable floor, or you can buy the air deck. If you do get problems with the floors, you can just either warranty them or you can just buy new ones if it's past the warranty period. So if it's, you've had the boat for two or three years and you put a hole in the floor, you can just order another one if repairing it isn't something that's for you if you'd rather be on the safe side of things and just buy a new one. So I'm gonna get the, my electric pump out now um, and just go around it and finish it off. So I would recommend getting one of these. This is just a inflatable pump it's for SUPS really, I like inflatable paddle boards, but it's got a lithium ion battery built in so it's, it's rechargeable. On one charge, you could probably pump up two or three boats uh, as a deflate function as well. And you can also set what PSI you want it to go to. So you just put it on and leave it. Um, I do tend to keep an eye on them though, just in case. Um, I think they're made in China and I don't, um, wouldn't trust the computer by itself. So I always just keep an eye on it. But yeah, that's it. And then we've got the right adapter on the end, ready to go. Also remember, if you're putting the air floor in, or the um, alloy deck, 
you can't put it in if the boat's fully inflated so I'd say put the whole boat up to sort of one PSI you might have to let a little bit out from there um, it's different with all boats so we'll see exactly what this is it probably needs to be at about 0.5 PSI uh, and then you slide the floor in and then you pump it up the rest of the way and that sticks the floor down really hard and makes it super solid but that's what I like about these pumps um, you just put it in the boat and you're obviously putting all your other stuff like putting your rod holders on, putting your fish finders on um, you can put the seats on at that point if you want launch wheels on and then by the time you've done all that that pump's kind of done most of the hard work for you and then when it comes to launching the boat you're not as totally knackered like that, that's made such light work of that and the good thing about it is because it's got the lithium ion battery in it you don't have to have it plugged into the car so if you're at a spot where you can't get like the car close to the boat um, it's a great alternative you've got the bravo pumps and that but i'm pretty sure they're quite expensive i think that was about what was the price on this one the pump about 90 quid for that pump and we've had that over a year now and it's, it's just been excellent Just stop that at 0.9 psi. And already on this boat, the um, obviously you've got the option to buy the Explorer pack, which is going to give you the oil locks. Uh, the oar stows at the back of the boat uh, and the, the rails that go across the whole boat but if you're a fisherman um, and you want to put like a baiting table on it rail blazer maybe fish holder tablet holder rod holders all that kind of stuff you've got loads of clear pvc just, like stick that straight onto um, so i think it's good that it comes with the option although they are they are possibly um, they are going to do it as a thing where it comes included with that pack so I guess um, maybe comment in the video which one you'd prefer rather, you, rather it just came with it or rather you'd have the option and then I think if you want the explorer pack it's 50 quid and you've got to kind of glue it on yourself so there's two more parts we'll do to this video as well um, that's probably taken us about between five and ten minutes to get it to the point where it's at now um, but what I will do is I'll do a timer just to see how long it takes to put the um, the floor in as well so I've got the inflatable floor just over there now we're on zero start there I'm not running around I'm not rushing it's on three seconds now um, this will be my first time putting an air floor in a boat so I don't know what to do um, got a rough idea so I'm just going to assume but I'm pretty sure it's simple enough right that's it uh, one minute and 57 seconds just to tuck that in I'm going to get the floor inflated not fully uh, but enough for it to be seated correctly Right, that's pretty much your lot. I mean, that's in. Um, there's an inflatable keel as well, which you'd inflate last. So now, obviously at that point, you'd inflate the floor to its um, full, which would be 10 PSI. And then you'd go around the tubes and finish them off, which are 3.6. So 3.6 on the tubes. My pump will only do 5% increments, so it'll do like 3.54. Um, so if it was me, I'd put it at 3.5. And that leaves a little bit of wiggle room as well for if it gets too hot because if it gets really hot the air inside it can expand and then you can burst tubes and all sorts so you should always something you should always be careful of as well uh, one of the benefits of this pump is if you swap the pipe to the other side because this this air deck is going to take a while to go down um, so if you do have the air deck one and you want to save time on putting it away get a pump that does deflate and inflate you literally just stick that on 
and it will suck the, the air. It will suck it totally flat. Now, I will be totally honest with you, that's probably a setting on these that's good for the airflow. I wouldn't recommend using it on the boat because you'll suck the boat so flat that it will fold real tight. And when they fold tight, I don't think it breaks them straight away, but over time, those creases and those tight folds are just going to wear down the material. Um, so ideally when you fold it, you don't want to suck the air out of it like I just did. But with the floor, it's not so bad because it's a high pressure floor, so it's a lot thicker than the rest of the boat. Um, but it definitely saves time. Um, also, this probably won't suck the air out of the actual tubes faster than you just opening the valve and pushing down on them. I'm going to get this out now and then we'll get on with the alloy floor. Probably fold this better than that. Oh, there you go. It's not going to take up much space, is it? Oh, as well, I forgot to mention you also get the, the extra pad, which is like a grip pad, um, and then you get a strap as well. So, so you put that through the handle of your petrol tank, and it stops it rolling around the boat. Pretty much all, come, all boats come with that now. Right, I'm going to move the boat over and then we will get the aluminium floor out. I'll tell you what, I'll unbox the aluminium floor um, over here. I'm uh, pretty sure you don't need to see that, it's four segments. Uh, our locking pins are there which go along the sides. So I'll give you a quick demonstration. Um, I'll put one piece in and then we'll switch back over to the GoPro and show you the whole lot. Um, so you guys, if, it, if anything, it may be a little bit of a tutorial, but we'll see how it goes. Right, so that's gonna be piece that weighs absolutely nothing. That's the front piece, piece number one. Um, that goes at the front of the boat, that's made out of probably marine grade ply. There's also, again, there's more PVC in here. And this is the exact same colour and the exact same material you've got here. So if you do puncture it, They've given you absolutely tons of this stuff. We got, when we first unboxed it earlier, we got two big strips of the grey. And just here we've got one, two, three, four, four more pieces of the PVC that the boat's made out of. So I'm not being funny. You're never going to run out of repair patches, all you need is glue. Correct side. I'll get them moved out of the way. But stuff, stuff like that's invaluable when you own an inflatable boat. So, I need a timer. Um, it is, this is now time to put the alloy floor in. So what I'm going to do, just as I've had a brain fart, I'm going to let a little bit of air out the rear two tubes. Um, we'll start timing it from now anyway because uh, I've done it before, so if you, how long, if, however long it takes me to do it, maybe you dad a minute or two, something like that. So we're going now on zero seconds now. Um, let a bit of air out. wondering what way up the pieces go. This side's smooth on the back and rugged on the front. It's rugged on the front for a reason, so you don't slide all over it. But if that's not enough, they're numbered the right way up. See, this bit, what we're gonna do is put number three into number four, and then we're gonna lift up two, and three, like that, and then we're gonna push them down into each other and down, and that's gonna lock all the floor in. It's pretty much the only way to do these.
Right, it'll be these bits next. And these are like the side locks. So I'll just get these unpacked. So far, uh, seven minutes. So we've got two small pieces, and then we've got two large pieces. What you need to do is if you're putting a large side on this side at the beginning, you need to start with a short side on the other, so interlace them. That's one side done. Now the other side's gonna be more difficult because there's now more pressure on it. So, as a little sort of tip, if you get something and slide it under the alloy floor towards the middle of the boat, it will make life a lot easier. You're probably not gonna to wanna to use your seat, but if you get a plank of wood, take a little bit of wood with you or something, it's gonna lift the boat up make this bit a lot easier. We started with a long piece on that side, we're gonna start with a short piece on this one. That's it, so the rest of it done. Now it's just about inflating it. 11 minutes to put the floor in. Um, I think I struggled a little bit because it's a brand new boat, so everything's kind of really tight. When it's been out on the water a few times and it's been inflated up to PSI, Imagine it does like a first stretch, probably makes it a bit easier. And if you're wondering why I'm sweating, I probably picked the hottest day of the year to do this on. Um, we'll do a little walk around video now of what I just did, and me explaining it a bit further. And then we'll get it fully inflated and do a first impressions walk around video. So as I was talking about in the last clip, um, these side locking slats. So if you notice, we had a long one and a short one. On this side, we've got a, lo a long length on the right hand side followed by the shorter length and then you have to alternate so on this side we'll have the shorter length at the back and then the longer length after the other thing I was talking about is when you're locking the last two pieces of flooring in um, you can either lock in three and four so you V them up click them in together push them down or you can do these two that I'm stood on, so it's two or three. If you're doing two and three, it makes it a lot easier. If you have someone just slightly pulling up the front of the boat, it takes a little bit of weight off it, it makes it a lot easier to press them down and click them in. But that's pretty much that now. We're gonna put her up to the uh, full, which will be 3.5 PSI on my electric pump. It does go up to 3.6, but um, I've never noticed the difference and it, and it keeps the volume down a little bit more as well for the heat. So we're literally just going to get the floor, not the floor, we're just going to put the seats in, um, put all the accessories on, and then yes, yeah, leash the side back. That's me being difficult as well, you could have slid that on from the back, but put on from the front because why not? so easy to put these on. Most boats, you have to um, wait, you have to do it when the boat's deflated, but these, if you forget to put them on, I mean, there's 1.8 PSI in this boat, and, and you can just slide them on, um, just like that. And the difference in, in like positioning, the way you can have them, is proper decent. So, you can have that one pushed all the way forwards if you wanted, and then you can have this one all the way back, but obviously you want space with like your tiller arm, but the fuel tank's put in a really good place, it's right out of the way. Um, the oil, the oil stoves, put one in for the sake of the video, but um, they pack away really nice, and just click together, pretty simple. And then they literally come over it. Literally, just click them in. Probably going to be a bit tough because they're brand new. But that's it, then they're right out of the way. And I think that's awesome. And then also, um, let me just see that way, so you can see, there's four D rings just at the back. Got four, two D rings each side, so you've probably got, I don't know, what VHF radio on that one. Fishing tackle. Obviously, you don't want anything loose in the boat, so they're literally along the hole. So you've got one, two, 
three, three on each side, one at the front, and then you've also got grab handles at the back here. So if you're sat on those tubes, holding it together, you've got something to hold on to with your arm. Um, I suppose it's nice not having anything on the tubes really, because it gives you plenty of spaces to like sit, which is nice. Normally, like especially with the home wave, when you're sat on it, there's always something digging into your bum, and after a while, that can get really uncomfortable. Um, but I actually really like the fact that there's just absolutely nothing here. It's just totally flat, and it's comfortable as well. At 1.8 psi, it is anyway, quite bouncy. Um, that's obviously not going to be the case once you put the full 3.5 in it. But I'm probably going to use this just with one seat, body just one seat at the front. Mount my fish finder to it, mount my iPad which has got my Navionics on it. Um, and obviously XL do like a big range of stuff that you can buy for these, like bow canopy, storage bags, seat bags. Um, but you've got the Explorer pack. If you wait there, I'll come back to the Explorer pack in literally two seconds. So this is a majority, sort of the main part of the Explorer pack. So you've got, these would normally have a, um, a vinyl that goes over the top of them. You've got your anchor store. Oh, I, I, you're not your anchor store, your, your row, row locks, one, on, one for each side, so you can glue them on, and then you've got the row stores, which you're going to go just behind it, preferably probably down there on the side somewhere, out your way, um, and then also, for, for those of you that like the rope rail that goes around the whole boat on some of the XL stuff, you've got these, so these just literally glue on then you've got the option to add these on if you want them. Obviously, if you're good at stuff like this, if I did this, I'd make a right mess of it. But, yeah, it's an option. It's there if you want it, which is the main thing. Um, that, I think, for the Explorer pack is um, it's about 49.99. But personally, I think that's pretty much perfect. So we've got, it's rated for 20 horsepower. I think the weight on this is about 70 kilos, but I'll have to double check. I'm pretty sure I would have put that in at the beginning of the video anyway. Aluminium floor or air floor, 3.6 meters. Three D-rings on each side on the inside, plus a D-ring at the front. Um, an anchor roller, so you've got a line roller for lowering your anchor, which is good, because it means it's not gonna like, rub around on the boat. Ideally, you'd probably wanna put something here as well, um, because obviously anchor tie-off points at the front here, rope goes round down onto this so you can get just a rubber pad to put that on there um, handle at the front the boat isn't extremely heavy obviously it's going to be a lot lighter with the air floor in it um, the first impressions are good um, I think the main thing is seating area there's plenty of it the weight's fine it's rated for a 20 which is perfect because I've got a 20 multiple different seating positions the option to put the accessory pack on or just to have it as it is the option to either have the alloy deck or the air floor so if you're a recreational angler that's going out at sea all the time alloy deck if you're sort of buying it for the kids and the family and you're only going to be doing a little bit of fishing on it um the air floor so you get the best of both worlds um the other thing that xl do and i forgot to mention this is they do a like an emergency pressure release valve which is over here so I'm not saying be reckless with it, but if you put too much air in the boat, that will release some pressure. Yeah. So Saturday, we're gonna take this out. I'm gonna to have to get it home, uh, put the long tools on, put my mounts on for my light tablet and everything. We haven't got a fish finder yet. I'm still deciding what to go for. I'm probably gonna get a hook seven. Um, maps we're gonna carry on using the, um, the iPad because it's convenient, it's cheap and it works. Yeah. I'd say the number one point about this boat is the fact that it's flat on the top so you can sit wherever you want, it hasn't got loads of stuff, sort of all this stuff is at the front, like the handles, and they've kept the back completely clear and free so there's space for you to sit down without getting an achy bum or having things sticking into you. So guys we're pretty much just now, we're going to do like a no rush um, fold away, so at the end of this the boat will be folded away into its bag and the floor and all of the accessories will be folded away into the other bag so we're currently at zero if i start that now and then i'll come back to you in a minute when it's done
I was always taught as a kid to use my head. That was easy. That was a no effort fold. That was not difficult at all. So there's there's boat folded. Done. And then we've got the last bit will be the bag for the floor. It's simple. Sliding the biggest bits to the floor first. So you always start with the front section. So, to completely do that, 12 minutes on the dot, that's to inflate the boat, take the floor out, take the seats out, um, put the boat away, put the floor away, even down to the pump, even the pump fits in the bag. So that's, that's everything you need. That's literally the whole lot. I'm gonna pull you down and just show you quickly, because we're pretty much done here. That's what it folds down into. If you had the air deck, um, what you'd fold it down into would be roughly, literally just the size of that bottom bag. About four foot in length. And you can fold them smaller. So that's, that's, that's a quick fold. But that's really good that just a quick fold gets it straight in the bag. Well happy with that guys. There you go, job's a good one. 30% left on the GoPro. So, Pretty much guys, um, I'm going to be taking it out on Saturday, um, we'll do a first like on the sea impressions of it, um, but yeah obviously I hope you've enjoyed the video, hope it's been informative, um, if you do like the video if you could like and subscribe because it obviously helps me do stuff like this more often, um, and also remember to comment about the Explorer pack if that's something that you'd rather have on or off when you buy. Um, the Scout 360 and it'll also be interesting to know if more people sway towards the inflatable floor, if more people sway towards the alloy deck, if so why. Um, yeah, happy days. I've enjoyed doing the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Take